Building a Super Walker Revolver, Part 3, Final Assembly. I'm William Hovey Smith, the author of Extreme Muzzleloading, and also a forthcoming book where I will hunt with this pistol. I'm Hovey Smith, the backyard sportsman, and this is Building a Super Walker Revolver, Part 3. In Part 1, we received a kit Uberti pistol from Dixie Gunworks. And in that episode, we actually finished the grips and polished the frame and disassembled the pistol to send it to Mr. Dykes Reaver for modification and putting on a special loading lever as well as weaver bases and expanding the frame a bit so we could load conical bullets. Then, when we received it back on part two, we disassembled it and we sent it to H&M Coatings of Akron, Ohio for a nitride finish. Now we have the gun back from them and we are at part three and are about to put it together. Well, the way you go about this is to first do the sub-assemblies and clean them as you go and that way you get rid of a lot of smallish parts and sort of restricts the numbers and so it's not so bad a job towards the end. So the first thing we're going to do is take care of our cylinder here which is pretty impressive. I mean this is a hunk of metal and it is shipped in a coating of oil okay let's sort of just wipe some of the excess off here and I'm also going to clean the chambers a little bit with rubbing alcohol. Well, you might say, well, why don't you just leave it all in there? Well, we are going to shoot this thing, and this excess oil does infect the powder, so yeah, we want to get it out of there. There we go. Revolver cylinders have nipples. And of course these were nitride coated too. Now I am going to put a little bit of grease on the threads before I put them back in the cylinder. Nipple wrench. Okay. Now that is done. The next thing we'll tackle is the barrel. And that is treated similarly. That's squeaky clean as you heard now. One part that was not nitride finished was of course the weaver sight rails which are specially made for this gun. You notice on the bottom here this is milled to fit octagonal flats. Okay? Plus it has four well placed holes on the rear which would be sufficient to hold the bases under recoil. All right, this fits there. And we look for four small identical screws and a suitable size screwdriver, which is probably this one, I think. Yeah. And index the holes. For added security, you can take some Loctite and put on the bottom of these threads. Now this is a new design of loading lever that Mr. Dykes Reaver has put on it. And it has a spring-loaded latch here, which we will now attach. There is a small roller pin, which was not nitride finished. And you have a spring that was not nitride finished either and you have the 
latch itself that does have a nitride finish. So these are now to be installed. This cures one of the classic problems of the Walker pistol, and that is it had a nasty tendency every time the pistol was fired that the loading lever would fall. So this was improved by Colt, and it really, really works. So this is pushed back into here and held against tension until the pin can be started. So we'll see if we can do that. You can start the pin now. Okay, so that roll of pin is in, so that is ready to go. Now we can proceed with the assembly of the loading lever. You want to attach your plunger first. And that goes here. And you'll, of course, have a screw. That looks... Maybe. Okay. Goes into here. And you have this one that goes here. That's basically done. We have another little sub assembly to do. This spring was taken out because it fits with the barrel wedge. And so it has a pin it goes here and a few strokes should seat it back down in okay good that drives that back into place uh, the pistol mechanism itself our frame our hammer On the underside of the frame, the first part that goes in is actually the pin that indexes into the slots in the cylinder that locks the gun. And that's this little part here. It's unusual in that these limbs are split, and so you have a little spring tension on these limbs. So it fits inside the slot on the bottom. Okay, got it in there. You have this screw, which is threaded on one side only, but is otherwise just a smooth pin. Once you have the cylinder latch installed, you can go ahead and attach this first screw through and put it home where it needs to be. Okay, so that's there. Probably the next part to put in is the pawl that actually rotates the cylinder. Now, this attaches on the large or flat side of the hammer and just pushes in to the hole. Okay, there is a raceway cut in the frame right here. And so that's where this part fits. Press the spring and start it up. Rotate the hammer in the spring together. Okay. And I found it necessary just to put a little tension on this spring to compress it just a little bit more. To get it to fit into the frame. There we go. Okay. And we can put in the hammer screw now. Okay. Yep, got that one. 
So we have one more part here, which is of course the trigger. And on Colt revolvers, the trigger has its own little screw. Look. spring to put in right here at the bottom. This is the one with the arms on it and the longer arm catches the trigger and the other the paw. So these are seated in and you need a very short fat screw for that. It's one of these. Once you have the brass frame and the springs attached, then you can check the gun for function. It should go to full cock and half cock. All right. There's half cock. All right. Full cock and fire. The hand should go up here as if it would rotate the cylinder, and the cylinder stop go up and down in the frame. We come to attaching the grips themselves and the steel back strap and these slide on and crimp up. You have a total now of four screws left. Two are long and two are short. You have two longer screws that go here two first. Now, the bottom of the brass here has about, well, almost an eighth of an inch of being in proper position for this screw to fit. So we actually put the gun in the vise to compress this to install this final screw. Now ultimately, I may devise a little more elegant way of getting compression on this brass frame than using my vise, but this is the best solution I've come up with quite yet. And being able to get it in straight It'll do what it needs to do. Okay. We have the frame and the grips together. We have the frame and the grips. Cylinder. Barrel. Barrel wedge, but okay. Super Walker. But now, this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe. Goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. The following photos will show you the pistol's components. Now, here are all the parts separated into groups. These are the major parts of the pistol the smaller parts and springs, and the other parts that were not nitride finished, as well as the finished gun. 
I am the author of a series of prize-winning books, including Extreme Muzzleloading, Backyard Deer Hunting, Crossbow Hunting, and Practical Bow Fishing, and all of these are available as softcover and e-books. I have an eight-book e-book series coming out on muzzleloaders, including Hunting with Muzzleloading Revolvers, out for 2014. For information about Dykes Reber and his gunsmith modifications, uh, you can contact him at the following address. Now, Dykes is a specialist in traditional muzzleloading guns based in North Little Rock. For H&M Metal Processing, go to their website at www.blacknitride.com. For info on my books, blogs, and videos, go to my website, www.hovysmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.